we're going to quickly start on the Russell. The Russell is continuing to outperform. And this has been remarkable, guys, because, again, if you look at the performance in Bitcoin, it's following the risk on assets of essentially the Russell. So, again, think about this. You have Microsoft, you have Apple, you have Google, you have all these other big cap, mega cap, trillion dollar companies. Those have actually been selling off. Those have been a store of safety. Those in, in the world of stocks, those mega caps are the equivalent of gold. It's a store of safety. When you see money rotating out of those mega caps, it means it's risk on. And we've seen the Russell, which is 2,000 companies, generally smaller companies, they've been just ripping to the upside. However, you are coming to the end of this run. So if we zoom out on this chart, in fact, I'm going to flip over to the weekly to show you guys a little bit more accurately here. Here's your weekly chart. And if we flip over to this, right, what do we have on in the midst of this, right? We have essentially a wedge pattern or right here, and we're getting very close. So there is still a little bit more upside in the Russell, but you're starting to get close to resistance. I think it's around 189, so it's about $2 away on the IWM. Now, on the other side, the question I have is we have a pivot low down here, which if we stretch to this, is now creating a secondary line. So again, do we hit here and check back down here, or do we hit here and break out, or do we hit here and then break down? And wedge patterns, again, when they're, when they're like this with two lines that are sloping up and down and meeting, right, down and up sloping trend line, this is much more of a 50-50 play. What wasn't a 50-50 play, and I went into this in this game plan, is remember Bitcoin? Bitcoin had a flat top with an upsloping trend line. When you have a flat top and an upsloping, remember, this isn't flat top right here, then price tends to break out to the upside. Same thing for the downside. If you have a flat bottom and a trend line sloping down, what ends up usually happening? The flat bottom is the one that gets broken and you go to the downside. And when they're kind of both sloping, it's more of a 50-50, which makes sense, right? If this one's favoring the downside with the flat line on the bottom, this one's favoring the upside, flat time on the top. If both are angled, it's kind of evening itself out and therefore it can be more of a 50-50. So we have to watch and see which way the Russell goes. I'm generally, I'm going to be honest, and you guys know this, I'm generally in the camp of skepticism, meaning that right now, um, the optimism in the markets is insanely high that the Fed is going to engineer some sort of a miraculous safe landing, even though they've raised interest rates at a velocity never before seen in history. Um, and again, I'm just a doubter on this. And I think we will ultimately see a recession. The question is, how bad is it and where is inflation? Because if inflation is still slightly elevated, let's say 3%, and by the way, we're right now still around 3.5% inflation. But if again, if it's at 3% even, can, how much can the Fed really drop interest rates? I don't know. We'll find out. This is your chart of the Qs. The Qs again have hit resistance. I gave you this line when we were right up at this level. So again, you can see it has started to curl over. At a bare minimum, we still should fill this gap right here just below 380. All right, now that's not much of a pullback, to be honest. It really isn't. But in, in terms of technicals, my job isn't to say, oh, well, I think it's going to cut right through here, and I think it's going to cut right through here, and it's going to cut through. No, as a technician, my job is to say, well, where's your next support? Well, it's right here. So now if it breaks that support, then I say, okay, where's your next support? Right there. Okay, if it breaks the support, here is your next one, right? And so investors tend to, and this is something we all have to correct in our mindsets, is that we tend to think about the narrative that we want it to achieve and say, oh, well, you know, the cues are going to go all the way down here in a month or two. In reality, that's our emotion. That's our bias. It's not helpful. It actually hurts you. You have to go level by level by level. Right. Think about it in terms of a game or a race, a relay race. You go from here to here and then you have to stop and then you go from here to here and so on and so forth. And I think that's important because 
what ends up happening is people end up saying, oh, well, I think the markets, and let's just, by the way, let's just go to a bigger time frame here on the S&P. Like, um, let's flip over to the S&P here. So in reality, right, I think that the NAS, the S&P, right, and let's go to the monthly chart of the S&P, the S&P has gotten way ahead of itself from its longer term range, which is kind of along here, up here. Now, again, I could say, sure, I eventually think the S&P is going to come all the way down here, 2,700, maybe even go even lower to 1,800. But what I'm going to miss while I'm waiting for that to happen is literally tens of thousands of millions of dollars in potential profits because you're going to get a ton of moves here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here. And there's so many opportunities, like right at this low pivot. That low pivot is standing out as the October low from 2022, I believe. That will be a major technical level. So yes, do I think eventually the markets have to go back to their long-term trend? Yeah, but do you really want to be in a trade that you're stuck in for three years before that happens or two years before it happens? I'd much rather be in and be out and be in and be out. This is how I trade crypto. This is how I trade stocks and commodities. And I make literally, you know, it's, it's always this, always this commentary about like, oh, you know, uh, you know, just buy and hold Bitcoin, right? You'll do fine. And the answer is that if you're in, a re in the real world, if you live in the real world, most people can't do that. They get flushed out on the weak bear market lows. They, they end up buying towards the highs, right? And in reality, you can make, and I do make, literally 10s, 10x, 5x, 100x more by swing trading this stuff using the charts. Now, it's not for everyone. You got to know what you're doing, but it's doable based on when you learn the charts. And I think that's really cool.